Doctor Who, Planet of Giants, the ninth story of the first Doctor, is written by Louis Marx and starring William Hartnell, William Russell, Jacqueline Hill and Carol Ann Ford. So originally season two was going to have 40 episodes. After watching the episodes, Donald Wilson, head of series and stories at the time, changed it due to a lacking of action and ordered that the final two episodes be edited into one episode. As I mentioned in my Unearthly Child retrospective that in the very first Doctor Who story the title was going to be The Giants and they would have had the Doctor and his companion Shrinking written by C.E. Webber. But because of its technical complexity and lack of character development they decided to drop that idea until the first story of season 2. So the concept was given to a writer, Robert Gould, in mid-1963 to make four parts a fourth story of season 1. But because of scripting difficulties, Louis Mox took over, so the story was inspired by Rachel Carson's 1962 environmental science book, Silent Spring. The first major documentation on human impact on the environment. As for the insecticide DN6, that was inspired by incidents described by Carson regarding the impact of DDT on insects. So the TARDIS landed and the Doctor believes he's in mid 20th century after the TARDIS went wrong. The Doctor, Susan, Ian and Barbara went out and see a giant worm and insects which is pretty intense as they saw dead ants. They see a big sign and Ian thinks that they're in exhibition or something. The moment where Ian saw a giant matchbox, Susan and the Doctor realise that the TARDIS crew along with the TARDIS have been shrunk and they're outside someone's house. The giant footsteps was pretty scary, it's so intense because you never know if the Doctor and his companions are going to be spotted and stepped on. And it was a guy who picked up a matchbox, Arnold Farrow, and he told the other guy, Forrester, of his findings. As a result, Forrester murdered him by gunshot, so Ian sees a body, then reunites with the Doctor, Susan and Barbara, after seeing his corpse. They've been spotted by a cat. <coughs> Pretty intense. So in part 2, Dangerous Journey, the Doctor and his companions kept very still and don't look at the cat until it lost interest. So the cat went away so the Doctor and his companions decide not to go back to the TARDIS while the cat is on the loose because how fast they can move. So Susan thought about communicate with people living in the house but the Doctor, Ian and Barbara didn't think it was a good idea because they'll communicate badly, plus they'll use them as experiments and also their murders so they can't expect sympathy and understanding from them. As I heard a thunder of footsteps coming, Barbara and Ian ran in one direction and the Doctor and Susan ran in the other. It was Forrester who brought a scientist Smithers. So Forrester lied to Smithers that it wasn't him who killed Arnold, Farrow, but as Smithers sees bullet holes, Forrester admits he killed him, so he tells Smithers not to expose him. Ian and Barbara were hiding in the briefcase and got taken into a science lab. Meanwhile, the doctor discovers a chemical smell in the draining pipe, so they climbed up. Ian and Barbara discovers seeds. Barbara picked one up and the contaminated with DN6 and decide not to tell Ian. Again, William Hartnell, William Russell, Caroline Ford and Jacqueline Hill are great as First Doctor, Ian, Susan and Barbara. I do love the Doctor's cloak, it suits William Hartnell. Alan Tilvin plays Mark Forrester who's a murder and businessman who owned a chemical company whose career depended on government approval of DN6. The actor did so well because he seemed terrifying. Frank Crawshaw, who played Arnold Farrow, was a government official who examines the effects of DN6 on animal life and also the one who got murdered. We also have Reginald Barrett, who played Smithers, the scientist, not Mr. Burns' assistant from The Simpsons. Rosemary Johnson played Hilda Rose, a telephone exchange operator who also ran the village job, and her husband, Bert Rose, who's a policeman, and he's played by Fred Ferris. I think the cast did an excellent job. I love the music in this story, it's so classic. I think Dudley Simpson is another great music composer. The sets and effects are well done for a low budget series. I don't know how they did it, but the whole cast and crew definitely has talent. 
So while Ian pushes the lock to get the flaps open, Barbara sees a giant fly. So Ian went to Barbara who passed out and the fly flies away and then later it died. After Smithers and Forrester discussing Farrow's body, the Doctor and Susan climbed up on the sinkhole like I said. The sets are fantastically done. As Barbara tried to tell Ian that she's been infected and dying, Susan called for them and they reunited. Forrester and Smithers return, so while the Doctor and Susan climb down, Smithers washes his hands and letting the water down the sinkhole, which is intense because the Doctor and Susan could be drowned. So in part 3, Crisis, the Doctor and Susan managed to take cover in the draining pipe, so Ian and Barbara went down to the sink and the Doctor and Susan managed to climb back out. While Forrester impersonates Farrow, the Doctor and his companion sees a giant notepad so they wrote the whole thing down and went to the telephone and using a cork to hold the receiver. So they try to call the police but obviously their communication is bad. So the Doctor, Ian and Susan finds out that Barbara was dying because she touched the seeds that's covered in DN6. So then Hilda finds out that Forrester is pretending to be Farrow so Bert goes out to investigate. So the Doctor and his companions decide to cause trouble by starting a fire as it's the only way to stop the spread of DN6. So they use gas tap to ignite an aerosol can of insecticide as Smithers and Forrester went in so did PC Bert Rose who took the gun off Smithers and arrested Forrester and Smithers. So the Doctor and his companions return to the TARDIS. The Doctor used his cloak to pick up a seat to show that they're returning to normal size and Barbara feels much better. So the TARDIS lands somewhere but the scanner is still broken and the Doctor says he shall know now where they are. So yeah, Planet of Giants, this is Dudley Simpson's first story doing the music. Donald Wilson decided to reduce the four part story to three parts because it was felt to be unsatisfactory opening to Doctor Who's second season and wanted to open the season with the following story, The Dalek Invasion of Earth. So yeah, I really loved Planet of Giants. It's well written. I definitely recommend seeing it. What do you guys think of this story? Drop your thoughts in the comments down below. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.